Hey everyone, it's Dominic, the Primetime Treasure Hunter. Thanks for coming by to check out my 500th video. That's right, 500 videos dedicated to helping you with your reselling business. And I'm real excited uh, for this show to be one in which I'm telling you about a $300 sale day. Now I'm rounding up a little bit. Technically it was $290, but I'm sure you'll uh, forgive the $10 roundup here. So it was $250 uh, worth of eBay sales and then another sale off of Facebook Marketplace. And the night's not over. There could very well be some more sales that happen tonight. I make a lot of sales uh, on Friday night. So uh, it's about 10 o'clock, so we still have a little bit more to go. But I've got to get these uh, packages uh, wrapped up and uh, I am planning to go to some, uh, what look like some good estate sales this weekend, especially uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for a treasure hunt video. But let me uh, go over some of these items. I will start with the lowest price item and then we'll work our way up to the higher priced items. And so uh, the first one here that I wanna show you, if you go back earlier uh, this year to my first garage sale, it's actually uh, called that in the title, the first garage sale hunt of, of this year. Uh, you may remember that I picked up a bunch of these and this is a little uh, stuffed animal here uh, by a company called uh, Dokken. And I told you to always look out uh, for that name. There you see D-A-K-I-N. They make a lot of nice collectible plushes. This is a vintage one, which amazing to me, still has the tag on it. There is a series called Dream Pets. And uh, this one here even has the name of the item. This is Las Vegas Al, and you see it has an ID number. So those are ways uh, you could look them up. I think he's really cool. He still has the card in place and he still has the uh, the dice in place as well. Uh, so being a vintage piece like this, I thought that this would sell for a little bit more. Uh, this is my last one left, so the other ones I picked up three of them in total uh, did sell for more than this one, but this one sold for $12. Uh, dollars. I was hoping to get at least uh, 20 bucks out of it. Um, you know, it was something that uh, I only got for like a, a buck or so. It wasn't that much money. Uh, so, but still, you know, there's a little uh, $12 sale uh, right there. But you know, they all add up. Uh, there's a cool piece and, uh, you know, happy he'll go to a, to a nice home. Now the next item that I'm gonna show you is pretty funny, especially if you watched my live show tonight with Don the Auction Professor where we did one of our Bolo uh, videos that's a Be On The Lookout show. So this was on Friday, October 25th, 2019 when we made that video if you're watching it in the future and you didn't catch it and you wanna come back and see that show. One of the things that we were talking about on the show is how I had recently purchased uh, 100 vintage salt and pepper shakers for $90 and that my business plan with that investment was to turn that into a minimum of $2,000 in gross revenue. And the way I planned on doing that was by selling uh, those salt and pepper shakers for a minimum of $19.99 a piece. And some would hopefully sell for more than that. And some have sold for, for more than that. And I had uh, shown some of the salt and pepper shakers that are currently in my eBay store. And uh, the link to that's down below in the description section if you wanna check out some of the ones that are there. But uh, these actually sold on the live show to Marie. So thank you, uh, Marie, for purchasing these vintage Siamese twin salt and pepper shakers. They are really cool. They have these uh, beautiful green uh, rhinestone eyes on them. They're just really, really neat. Uh, I'm very glad to send them to you, uh, Marie. So thank you again uh, for the purchase. But uh, I've sold a lot of these vintage salt and pepper shakers for $19.99 a piece or more. So be on the lookout for those. If you could get vintage salt and pepper shakers for a dollar a piece or less, my experience is that you could set the price for $19.99 at a minimum and just wait and someone eventually will come along and purchase them for you, as long as the market is not flooded with that same exact uh, salt and pepper shaker. And in terms of shipping them out, what I like to use, just as a little uh, prime time tip of the day here for you, are these little eBay boxes. And if you have an eBay store, you do get a $25 credit. If you have a basic store, if you go above that, you can even get $50 credits uh, each quarter. And so I apply that to uh, get these right here. These are the uh, six by four by fours and uh, they just open up uh, real nicely 
like this and so you just bubble wrap the uh, shakers and you put them in here and uh, you just protect it with some uh, additional bubble wrap maybe an air pillow or so close the top on it and they always get there fine no problem whatsoever and they stay first class i've not had any salt and pepper shakers go over that so uh, just keep that in mind as a little bonus uh, shipping tip because i know uh, people like those. Now, what would one of these uh, videos be like lately without me showing you a poster, especially a Star Wars poster? And I have one to show you right here uh, that's sold. And I might do a separate video on the negotiation behind this one because it was pretty funny, but I'll spare you that for right now. But uh, this one uh, sold for uh, real, really what I was hoping to get out of it, which would uh, be a minimum of 35 bucks. And that's what I got out of it. Uh, this is a really cool uh, vintage one. Uh, this one, I believe, is from uh, 1980 uh, I don't know if the, the date is right down here but uh, uh, oh yeah here we go right here so uh, this is actually by uh, that says Boris 1980 that's Boris uh, Vallejo so uh, he also has a little uh, popular uh, following if you look him up uh, as well so uh, this though with Darth Vader being there and uh, all the different characters around and being a vintage poster I mean this is a no-brainer that this one was gonna sell especially right around the uh, uh, right around the holidays, so a $35 sale on that poster, very good. And remember, I've talked about these before, it's going to go right in this little uh, mailing tube right here, keep it nice and safe uh, and secure. Now, the next item that I sold, I can't actually show you because it actually was a Facebook Marketplace sale. Uh, but I have a picture of it that I'm going to show you in just a second. And this is uh, those big uh, shutter doors that I wound up pulling off of that uh, trash heap when I went around during big pickup day near the estate sale sign up. You remember those big brown doors? That's right. These doors right here. I'm going to show them to you. Take a look at these. So those sold today for $40. Uh, that's great. I mean, like I say, you can't be free. Pick them up for free, toss them in. All I had to do is spray them down. I showed you that in the video. We didn't even do anything in terms of painting them. The guy who purchased them said that uh, he was going to use them. I think even cut them up and, uh, you know, saw them and uh, use them around his house for, for decoration in different areas. So... You know, what do I care? Whatever he wants to do with it. Uh, but it's a great uh, $40 sale on those doors. Literally, again, just sprayed them down, picked them up for free, sold them. All I had to do is transport them back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters. So that's a $40 sale. And then uh, again, you know, kind of what would one of these videos be on a Friday or sometimes a Saturday morning where I'm showing you one of these trains again. <laughs> yes, that's right. Some of you are saying another one of these trains, but that's the point. It just continues to reinforce. Like every week I have one of these to show you. Now I've shown you ones before that I've sold for hundreds of dollars. This one didn't sell for quite that much. This one sold though for $57.50, so almost a $60 sale for this. Uh, it's just because it's a matter of supply and demand. There's still a bunch of these out there, uh, but this one, if you're wondering what the model number is here, there you go. It's right on the side. If you you want to look it up uh, but uh, these uh, oversized uh, trains either G size trains or O size trains very popular again LGB is a great company in addition to Lionel look for the uh, bright red box and I'm telling you if you get one of these and you put them up uh, as long as they're in uh, pretty decent condition and even if there's pieces broken off I've shown you before uh, these are gonna sell pretty quick uh, usually um, sometimes within a few days or you know within a week at most you probably might have to wait a few weeks on it if you priced it uh, really, really uh, high, uh, as long as it still is within reason. Uh, so the, the last sale that I want to show you today, this is our $100 uh, plus sale. As many of you know, I specialize in comic books, and you may remember me sourcing this uh, at a collectibles haul uh, that I picked up uh, about the end of last month. And I'm about to go back to that sourcing spot again uh, sometime next week. So I don't know, I might do a video uh, about that at some point if I wind up getting some good things out of there. But uh, it's this one here. This may look familiar to you if you're a member of my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The link to that's down below. I do a be on the lookout item of the day. And this is the item that I showed. This is an X-Men comic book. As you can see here, it's issue 266. And it is notable because it is the first full appearance of of Gambit. And there he is right there, uh, saving Storm in the comic book. He's one of the uh, mutant heroes. He's pretty popular. This book was published in 1990. And it's a good example of an exception comic uh, for, 
uh, something in the 1990s because a lot of comic books in the 1990s are not worth much. They really just flooded the market. But this is exactly 1990, so right when it starts, so you're kind of on the border there. And this is an exception comic book. Again, the popularity of the character is what helps make this book sell, even though technically, if you want to be really technical about it, it's actually not the first time Gambit actually appeared in a comic book. The first time Gambit appeared in a comic book was as a cameo appearance a month earlier in the Uncanny X-Men Annual number 14. But the interesting thing about it is that the story for that comic book, the annual, actually the storyline actually goes after this particular story. So people kind of debate back and forth which one should you consider the first appearance of Gambit. Should you go by the storyline or should you go by the publication date? And this is the crazy stuff that happens in comics uh, sometimes, but the market has really determined what is more popular because this book is clearly more uh, sought after. You can see here that something special about this is that it is in a plastic slab. This is known as a graded comic book and the company uh, that you want to get this from and not only is it graded obviously you could see here it's officially graded it's a 9.2 which is a near minus grade but it's certified and it's certified by a company called a CGC. That is the most popular company out there that grades comic books. There are other ones. The second most popular would be CBCS followed by PGX. But CGC is really the one that you want to look for. And as you can see here, if you've never seen one of these before up top, again, obviously we have the grade. It will tell you some things about the artist. It will also tell you uh, the date that the book was published. Uh, of course, the title. And it will tell you some special things that happen in the book in terms of a first full appearance. Uh, or, you know, will tell you something about like a certain character that appeared that's notable. And these are things that you want to put in your listings, put the most relevant information in the title, and then take all that other information and put it in the listing. And on the back of it too, uh, it will also have uh, some information, not as much as it will up front, because this is really the display part of it. Uh, and in terms of value, uh, again, I told you this sold for $125. There's a lot of money in these decimal points. So if this said 9.8, instead of 9.2, which would make it even more desirable because that would be near mint plus, then this book would have sold for $400, right around that range. Now, if it's the same grade, and this is where grading comic books matter, so you understand is if it's totally new to you, if it was the same condition, near mint plus, near mint plus, remember this is near mint minus certified. If it was near mint plus, plus, but not certified, not in a slab like this or anything, not protected, that would sell for right around $130, like at the upper end, which is right around what this sold for. But again, this isn't near mint plus, it's near mint minus and it's in a slab. So you see all these little points, they, um, they really make a difference. If you're interested in learning more about comic book grading, I have a great uh, book by Overstreet that I use. It's a nice little guide, doesn't cost a lot of money. It's like, I don't know, like 13 bucks or something like that. And it's filled with all sorts of awesome pictures for each decimal point grade. And it tells you all things about uh, learning about comic book grading. And I have it right in the very bottom of the description section of this video. If you want to learn more about grading, it could really help you out if you're just trying to uh, get into comic books. But this is my top uh, sale for today. So add it all up again, comes to right around $300. Now, uh, this weekend, like I mentioned, I, I am really uh, hoping for an exciting weekend. I think that the best sale tomorrow uh, to go to in terms of a state sale uh, will be first thing in the morning and I might just wind up there all day and just stay there all day just picking through stuff based on the pictures. We won't know until we get there so make sure that you watch the haul video that's going to come out uh, after this one. Now one last programming note. I was thinking of doing a commemorative video on the 500 videos that are now on the channel in the form of a solo live show and I would hope for all of you to come in and join and share with me some of your favorite memories of the past 500 videos, uh, any highlights and things like that. I could even maybe put up some clips or things like that and even get them ready in advance if you want to let me know some ideas for that down below uh, in the description section. So uh, if there's enough interest in that, I might put something like that together, uh, even maybe as early as next week. Who knows? 
So uh, I really appreciate you coming by and supporting me through uh, all these 500 uh, videos. It's uh, definitely been a long haul, but it has been a lot of fun. I've got to go pack up all these items and get ready for the treasure hunting this weekend. Uh, the juices are already flowing for it. I cannot wait to get out there tomorrow morning and start uh, and finding some more treasure. So uh, with that, if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, pass it on to others, trying to get to that 10,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year. We're at 8,400, so I really need your help to get there for sure. Uh, thanks very much for all of your support. Again, uh, come over to my Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I just did a video on there exclusive to there uh, last night talking about auctions versus buy it now and when to uh, pick whip. And as a last reminder, make sure you come to the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. All those links plus more are down below in the description section. See you all at the next video, everyone. Take care.